Hello everybody, this is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. This week's video is in relation to the article I've done on the health services sector as reported by FactSet Research Company. This particular sector out of the 20 sectors that FactSet produces is probably one of the smallest sectors of all. And what's interesting about this sector is that it's more oriented, from what I've been able to determine at least, to growthy stocks rather than dividend paying stocks. So if we look at this portfolio review, I've come up with six companies that I'm going to be covering in this sector that I consider to be fairly valued in the health services sector. Now, first of all, I want you to notice that the credit ratings, are, I've got one A rated. Most of them are what I'll call minimum investment grade companies. They're all in this healthcare services sector, but I've got a managed healthcare services to the health industry, medical nursing, medical nursing. So covering the majority of the subsectors that are in this particular sector. Five of them are on a New York Stock Exchange. One is NASDAQ. You can see their PEs are all below the 17 that I screened for. Their earnings yields are all above 6.6% except for Fresnes Medical Care, which I'll cover. Three of them pay a dividend, but technically only two of them pay at what I'll call a meaningful dividend. There is less than a one-tenth of one percent dividend coming off of Cigna, but it's really irrelevant. So only two of these companies are paying a dividend, which is why I indicated they're more growthy. Now in terms of size, Cigna is the largest at $63 billion. And then we have coming in at Fresnes Medical Care at $24 billion. But then you can also see we've actually got Mednax, which is a small cap. And we've got Stericycle, which is about a four and a half. You could call that small to mid cap. So they come in all different sizes. Their debt ratios, long-term debt to capital ratios, are all under 50%, which I consider a plus. So let's take a look at each of these individual companies and see what kind of characteristics they possess, as I talked about in the written portion of this article. These are primarily growthier opportunities. So in other words, they're capable of generating long-term rates of return. Now, I'm going to use the full all graph that goes back approximately 20 years if it's available, depending on the companies. And I'm looking at the growth. Now, you'll notice the growth is reported here in the fast facts box. So in the case of Cigna, they've averaged 11% growth. You can see they were paying a moderately healthy dividend, but then they cut their dividend, and now they haven't paid a dividend in more than a year. So even though we're showing a one-tenth of 1% 1 dividend yield, there really is no dividend here. I do want you to notice the orange line plots the company's operating earnings per share, and you can see it's been a pretty consistent growth stock. They do occasionally have a down year, but generally speaking, the trend line growth here has been very strong. The company has had a penchant to be trading at a discount to a, what I would call a normal fair value 15. The normal P.E. ratio over this time frame is about 12. And keep in mind, these are dynamic calculations that can change. So we don't see much in the way of dividend. We see pure growth. Now, the company is undervalued based on the orange line, which I would call a theoretical fair value. You can see it's been valued at that rate or slightly higher several times. Right now, it's below the blue line, which is the normal P.E. ratio ratio of 12.4. It has fallen rather dramatically since November of 2018. It got hit big in December, but it's continued to drop through yesterday's close of this year. But I also want you to notice as you examine this stock over time, you see periods, this constant reversion to the mean. You see the stock getting overvalued, coming back into fair value. You see the stock getting undervalued and then moving back into fair value and so on and so forth. And it's been doing that you know, rather frequently over recent times periods here. So we see a nice company with nice growth, A minus rated. Let's look at performance over this time frame. And that's measuring it from this dot to this dot. So over this period of time, and I'm actually measuring it from January 31st, 2000, where the stock was trading at just under $24 a share, a $10,000 investment in this company would have paid almost a third or fourth of the amount of dividends that the S&P did. However, it would have turned 10000 into 70000 versus approximately 22000 in the S&P, averaging just under 11%, which is, again, almost identical to the company's growth rate. And then, you know, the total adding in the dividend income, it's about 108 versus 5.1. 
But because the rate of return is roughly double the S&P, I do want you to notice that we have over two times as much return because of the power of compounding. Now from a future point of view, from a forecasting point of view, this is a reasonably well followed company. There are 23 analysts and then it drops down to 22 and then down to 14 by 2021 that are forecasting 15% growth for this coming year. This is fiscal 2019, followed by 12% and then followed again by 12%, 12 in fraction. So if this were to trade at its fair value PE of 15, you could see the rates of return here would be over 30% annualized over the next year and, you know, three quarters, so to speak, over two and three quarters years, averaging about 24%. If I apply the normal PE ratio that we looked at, and I'm going to use the one that we saw in the graph, which was around 12, you still would have a very strong rates of return of, you know, double digit rates out to the end of 2021. So I think what we're looking at here is a very attractively valued, growthier stock that's in the managed healthcare industry. Cigna is a relatively well-known company. If I look at their analyst scorecard and just look at the summary, you can see that the analysts have missed estimates 10% of the time in both the one and two year forward. But this is a pretty good record. In other words, this company appears to be reasonably reasonable or able to be come up with reasonable forecasts within you know moderate ranges of error here. So when you look at this stock, you can see that the price and the return has followed the growth rate of the company over time. The company is still expected to continue growing into the future. Now, I spent a little extra time on this stock because I wanted you to be familiar with the graphs. The orange line represents operating earnings per share at a fair value multiple. The blue line is the normal PE. And then the white line is the dividends. And you can see there is no dividend expectation on this company. So as I go through these next five charts, try to keep those how this graph works. My next company is Quest Diagnostics. It's a company that, that provides services to the healthcare industry. And this one is one of the two that pay a dividend. I do want you to notice their dividend yield is about 2.4%. Their current blended PE, which is past, present, and a little bit of future, is around 13.9%. The market has normally applied, or quite often, I might say a better way to explain it, puts a premium valuation on this stock, which is the blue line, which is a 17.9 PE. But once again, you see this reversion to the mean when looking at the PE ratio or theoretical fair value of 15. Price does track earnings in the long run, but it can get disconnected in the short run. When I look at long-term performance, performance here, once again, we see a company that's dramatically outperformed the S&P on a capital appreciation basis. And this goes back to January of 2000 in this example. But it's also produced substantially five or, or more times the dividend income. And so it's turned 10,000 into 100 and almost 20,000 versus the market turning 10,000 into 20, roughly almost 26,000 over the same time frame. A great, you know, performer over time. As far as the future is concerned, it's not forecast to grow very fast, but because of its low valuation, it does offer double digit rates of return going out for the next couple of years. And then if we apply that normal multiple and I apply that 17.9 multiple, or I'll get as close as I can here, that 17 multiple we saw in the historical graph, then the rates of return would be very substantial. So again, here we have another total return opportunity, but we also have a nice dividend income kicker. If you look at the dividend, the dividend has grown on average 35% a year and the compound average growth rate has been just under 25% a year. So you can see the dividend growth here over time has been extraordinary. So there you have Quest Diagnostic. My next company is the other dividend paying stock in this group of six. It's Freshness Medical. I hope I pronounced that correctly. The company trades at about a 15 PE, offers a 1.1% dividend yield, it has about 26% debt, which I like, and is triple B minus rated. Now, as I mentioned in the article, this is one of those healthcare services companies that has chronically or consistently traded at a premium valuation. You'll notice the normal P in the stock has been about 21. The fair value calculation for an 11% grower, very similar to what we saw with Cigna, should be 15. Now, it has traded at a 15 multiple or less 
only three times on three different occasions over this time frame, which goes back to 1999. Otherwise, it trades are somewhere around this 20 PE ratio. If I look at long-term performance, I want you to notice the stock is starting out pretty highly valued here. Long-term performance has been about equal to the market over this time on capital appreciation, just slightly better. It has paid significantly more dividend income, and it has outperformed the market as a result because of the higher yield and the moderately higher capital appreciation. But again, that's not great outperformance, but I do want to make a point that I can attribute that to the fact that the stock was overvalued. If I cut some years out of this graph here where it was reasonably valued based on its normal PE, the performance is different. We still outperform the market here on both dividends and capital appreciation, but we outperform it a, a little better simply because we have better valuations here. But I also want to point something else out. Because this stock trades at a premium valuation, and one thing you might notice, most of these stocks have recently become out of favor with healthcare. There's a lot of politics going on in healthcare. You know, even the discussion points of eliminating private healthcare altogether. And so these stocks have dropped precipitously from its peak back in 2018. This stock has collapsed almost 30, over 30% over this time frame here. So you can see that, that when you're dealing with stocks that are overvalued, there can be a rather substantial risk in terms of a reversion to the mean. Now looking at normal multiples here, which is that 20 multiple, this stock looks very attractive going forward. Looking at a fair value 15 multiple, it still offers positive rates of return, but certainly at a much more muted level than we saw using the normal PE. So the point is, as an investor, you always have to make a decision here. Are you willing to say that this stock deserves this 20 premium, or is that simply the market behaving badly over this long period of time? The point is, the information is there for you to evaluate. Now, the last three stocks I'm going to be covering in this series of six research candidates is going to be another growth stock, and this is Laboratory Corporation of America. Again, pays no dividend, which is, you know, obviously important. It it's a triple B rated company, has about 46% debt, but I do want you to notice the earnings and price relationship here, how price has tracked earnings over the long run. And once again, we see this continuous reversion to the mean. We see overvaluation moving back into a 15 PE. We see undervaluation moving back into a 15 PE. Long-term trend line growth here tracks earnings. So I'm going to cut one year off of that, which we still have an overvaluation period here. So I'm going to cut two years off of that. Now, we're at fair value. The growth rate here has been about 11%. That's the excessive or above market growth rate. The stock fell dramatically, but you can see it's been recovering strongly throughout 2019. So when I look at performance here with 11%, 10.9% growth rate, I actually have outperformance. I, you know, there is no dividend. Consequently, the point is this is all about total return or capital appreciation or growth. $10,000 over this time frame, I'm using 2002 here would have grown to 66,000 versus 30,000 plus in the market. The S&P did generate some dividends, so it's 66,000 or 12.4% versus 35,600 or 8.2%. This has nice growth characteristics. When we're looking at forecasting, future growth is expected to be lower, and I think it's important, but that still would give us double-digit rates of return going out. Looking at the normal multiple, which is very similar to the fair value multiple, as you can see on this graph, the two are very very close. So in other words, a 15-ish PE ratio is very relevant to this stock. You can see when it got overvalued, it came back. When it got undervalued, it came back. It got undervalued here by the end of December of last year, and we've had this nice strong recovery. So there's Laboratory Corp of America. My next research candidate is Mednax. This is the small cap, $2.6 billion. Now I find this graph extremely interesting. You can see that the company's had very nice earnings growth company seems to have run into some issues here since 2015. But coming into 2015, the stock was trading at a very high valuation, almost 23 times earnings. And then we had this really, I'll call it, you know, precipitous drop during this period of time where the stock has fallen 64%. That's a 25% almost annualized loss over this time frame. And I think you can attribute that to the fact that this consistent growth that we saw for all these years kind of faltered during this period of time. But once again, I want you to notice how price goes where the company's operating results go. And I want you to see when you get overvalued, it comes back. When you get undervalued, it comes back. 
But again, this is kind of a growth stock performance here because of that precipitous drop, or even in spite of that precipitous drop, I should say, has still dramatically outperformed the S&P 500 over this time frame, averaging 14.5 versus 5.1. So you have you know good compounding growth here and a company that has become significantly undervalued. Consequently, what I'm really suggesting here, this is a valuation play, but it's no longer a growth play because I do want you to notice growth rates expected to be half of what it's historically been. The company has a decent analyst scorecard, but again, it's all about growth. And I think when you're dealing with stocks like this, you have to recognize there's greater risk here, especially with the lack of a dividend. Now, the last stock that I'm going to be covering here is Stericycle, which basically provides services to the healthcare industry. And this is a very interesting story. And it shows you to me this, and I kind of, I didn't necessarily save it for last. It kind of came up last, but I do consider it a really an excellent story because if you'll notice here, you had very strong growth. You know, if you look at the growth rates down here at the bottom, you can see this company was not uncommon to be growing at 20% rates, 15% rates, 14% rates. And you can see that nice level of growth and you can see that the market was applying about a 30 PE ratio to this stock over this whole time frame. But now if I drop this graph down to an eight-year graph, all of a sudden the growth rate has fallen to two and a half percent. And look at this big adjustment. Now this is not a necessarily a reversion to the mean as much as it is an adjustment to the much lower growth. I don't think it makes any sense to be looking at this stock as a 20 multiple company anymore. In fact, when I'm going into the forecasting graph, they're expected to have a down year in earnings this year, which means negative rates of return. Going a couple of years out, we still don't see much in the rate in the term of rate of return. Now, the long-term growth rate is expected to still average 8%. So I'm going to blend these two together the long-term growth rate with short-term estimates. And you can see that you could see a double-digit rate of return on this stock. But the point I want to make here is that this stock has a great history and a great track record. If I measure performance from, you know, back here when it was trading at a 30 PE, roughly in line with this 29 PE, and I measure it, I'll just pick a spot here. That's the top. You know, we would have averaged 23% a year. This was very attractive as a growth stock. But of course, now if you take that same kind of time frame and measure it to what we see now with this valuation, that rate of return is still attractive at 13%, but it's fallen dramatically. But I did want you to see the dangers here. There are a lot of companies that the market applies a premium valuation to. Anytime you're seeing that, I think you need to be very careful because if you get a flattening of earnings like we saw here, obviously the correction can be substantial. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video on the health services sector. This is, I'm halfway through now the 20 sectors that I was covering with this series. This has been one of the smaller sectors, the health service value sector. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll be talking to you again soon.